Coming up on iOS Today, Rosemary Orchard and I take a trip into Apple Arcade to talk about some games we've been playing, some games you should check out, and some new games that you might not have heard of. So stay tuned. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This episode of iOS Today is brought to you by Ultimate Ears Fits. Ultimate Ears Fits are the world's most comfortable earbuds with premium sound and all-day comfort. Use promo code iOS at ue.com slash fits to get your pair. And by Buck Mason. Buck Mason's clothes are second to none. Once you try Buck Mason, they'll become your go-tos too. Head over to buckmason.com slash iOS and get a free t-shirt with your first order. Here we are again for another episode of iOS Today. This is the show where we talk all things iOS, tvOS, HomePod OS, watchOS, iPadOS. Look, it's all the OSs Apple has on offer, and we talk about them and how you can make the most of them here on iOS Today. I am one of your hosts, Micah Sargent. And I'm Rosemary Orchard. Hello, Rosemary. How are you today? I've been very unproductive this week, Micah. Um, you said Apple Arcade, so I went and spent like six hours playing games yesterday. Um, I, I I kind of forgot to put some show notes together, but we'll just wing it, right? It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, we'll get there in the end. Um, yes, this, look, Apple Arcade is Apple's subscription service uh, for being able to play games that kind of fit a a particular mindset, if you will. Um, These games don't have any free-to-play mechanics where you have to watch ads or where you choose to watch ads uh, in order to continue playing or you have to wait a certain amount of time to play or you pay to be able to continue playing. All of these games are made to be able to be played with this one subscription of four ninety nine a month, on top of that, Apple uh, makes these games available to be played without needing a connection uh, online. So you there's there's some version of the game that should be able to be played without needing to connect to the internet, and that is kind of a, a privacy thing. Uh, some of the apps that exist outside of this will use kind of your activity, your actions uh, to to make a difference in or to, to be able to track you and kind of understand. Uh, what you're doing. So Apple wanted to give folks the opportunity to play these games without having it um, kind of be a a trade-off there. So with that comes uh, the continued addition or the continual addition of games to Apple Arcade uh, to the library. And uh, that this is the opportunity now to kind of take a peek back inside the Apple Arcade library, see what's going there. Uh, you may have heard of some of these that we're going to talk about. Some of them may be new to you, or maybe these versions of the game are new to you. So without further ado, uh, Rosemary Orchard, why don't you kick us off with your first pick from Apple Arcade? Well, my first pick is somewhat in honor of Dr. Drang, who is kind of, uh, um, you know, one of those nerds who you keep hearing about in Apple circles. And uh, he is into many things. But uh, when I actually had a conversation with him, he noted that he's in engineering. And when I came across Bridge Constructor Plus in the App Store, it just reminded me of him in some way. And I thought, I don't know, constructing bridges sounds like it could be a fun exercise. Um, And the best part of uh, Bridge Constructor is you can create bridges and nobody actually dies if you get it wrong. So, you know, that's a definite win right there. So Bridge Constructor, you have uh, various uh, different areas that you need to unlock. And in order to unlock things, you need to create bridges. Um, And so I'm starting over in Westlands over on the left-hand side. And what I've done is I've gone back and I've reset my first bridge so that I can easily construct this um, and to give people more of an idea of um, how you get started. Um, And so what you do to start with is you have a gap between two pieces of road. And on one side, there is a black and white check a flag, uh, just like in the Formula One at the end. Um, And your aim is to get the trucks to the other side. Why did the truck cross to the other side? Because you were building a bridge. That's why. Um, So to start with, you only have wood to build your bridge with. Um, And this is this being the first one, they've given me a bit of a guide with an outline um, that I can just, uh, you know, put uh, some things on. So I have to start um, at one of the white dots. 
And then from there, I can draw um, to various points um, to create an actual bridge. Now, it should be noted that triangles are pretty good structurally. Um, and so that's why I've gone with the triangles. When you're done building your bridge, you can hit play and it'll come up. It might be green. Or if you, you've uh, failed somehow, uh, so for example, if I remove this, this top section, um, it, it, it kind of goes yellow, orange, and then red if there's structural integrity laggings, lacking. So I'll put that back together. And then, um, oops, uh, I will run some large bands over it and see what's happened. So you have a bridge, uh, a budget for every bridge that you're building, um, and your job is to stay under budget um, or you know on budget if, if that's um, a possibility. And you do get points for being under under budget or extra points, uh, bonuses. Um, and so when you've built your bridge, you can then continue on to the next one where it gets progressively more difficult. So I'm going to pick one that I haven't done because um, as you continue, it, it does get trickier. Um, and what you can see here is I have a budget of 7,000. It does not specify which monetary units. So I'm assuming it's simoleons, just like The Sims, but you know, maybe, maybe it's not. Um, but if I needed some help, um, then I can tap on the light bulb in the top left and I can select to get a hint. Um, and then it'll give me some outlines of dotted lines that I need to complete in order to, uh, you know, make a structurally secure bridge. Um, so as I go ahead and build things, then hopefully I will find out uh, that I have made a lovely structurally strong bridge. So I'm just going to try and put that together, pop this one in here, and I'm going to guess that I need to do this over here as well. Uh, bridges are usually somewhat symmetrical. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm going to hope that that is what I needed to do there. And let's try. Oh, no, no, that was very definitely not secure. Um, I'm going to need to do something else here. I guess maybe I can do that to uh, increase the structural integrity. Nope, possibly need to do something there. Yeah, it could work. It could work. It's a little bouncy. We'll see whether or not the trucks make it. Hopefully they will. Yeah, that's not very secure, is it? Well, yeah, okay. Uh, I'm going to have to go back and figure that one out. But the good news is there's still another hint waiting for me. So I will get to uh, have some fun and hopefully not let some truck drivers dry, dry, die driving over my bridges today. But they are virtual, so, you know, it, it's probably okay. Yes, indeed. I, I Hopefully it will be okay for them uh, in the end. All right. Yeah. Bridge Constructor Plus uh, in the Apple Arcade uh, area of the App Store. Um, the yeah. one I want to talk about is one that folks may have heard about uh, before, maybe didn't, haven't given it a try, or uh, maybe it's one of your favorite games. In any case, I think one of the coolest games in uh, Apple Arcade is called Sneaky Sasquatch. Uh, Sneaky Sasquatch is a very cute game involving... Yes, you guessed it, a Sasquatch. Uh, and essentially, you are, it's a little bit like uh, if you've ever seen Yogi Bear, it's a little bit like Yogi Bear in the sense that this character is um, kind of trying to uh, do things outside of just uh, being a Sasquatch in the forest. So I'm going to start a new game because I don't want to mess up the game uh, that I have going. And also because it shows kind of the introduction, so you get a little bit of the story of what's going on with uh, Monsieur Sneaky. Uh, so the Sasquatch comes out of its uh, little house, and oh my goodness, it's so hungry. Um, you, to move your character, to move your Sasquatch, you simply can tap on the screen and drag your finger, your finger around to be able to move that Sasquatch. Oh, there's a bear down there. You can have a conversation with the bear. Oh, the bear is sleeping, so no convo there. It appears I can't eat those mushrooms on the ground, so I'm going to... Oh, I can talk to a, a raccoon. Let's see. The raccoon says, Hiya, buddy. You look hungry. You should go to the campsites and grab a snack. Here, take one of these backpacks so you can carry stuff around. Oh, I think I'll choose the green one, of course. Looking good, says the raccoon. And now we head to the campsites with... Oh, look at that gorgeous backpack. I kind of want that myself. <gasps> hey! You know you're not allowed in the campground, says the ranger. You'll scare away all the campers. Oh, no. What do I do? What does the sneaky Sasquatch do? Uh, pff, don't worry about that guy, says the raccoon. We just have to be sneaky. And now we're going to follow the raccoon into the campground. And we'll see what happens 
here. All right, so we are in the campground. It says, let's open up this food box and see what's inside. This food box is a cooler uh, that I'm now opening. Yes, not only do you have to uh, use the uh, touch controls to move around, but also to open up the cooler, tap inside and pull out some sausages. Uh, so I'll pick that up and put it into my backpack. And it looks like some ketchup that I'll put in there as well. And now I'm gonna close that cooler and walk away. That's a good snack right there, but don't eat it yet. That would be uncivilized. Follow me, I'll show you the proper way to eat it. So apparently there's a proper way to eat um, the food. Ah, looks like we're at a, a picnic table. It says, dump it on the table over here, then eat it. So I'll tap on the table, dump out the sausages and the ketchup, which I guess Sneaky Sasquatch is just going to eat in its entirety. And uh, now we can enjoy the sausages as well. I'm not sure plastic is good for your digestion like that. That that feels like it, <laughs> it might cause problems later. I agree. Wow, you sure know how to eat. It's starting to get dark though. Let's head back and call it a day. So now that it's getting dark outside, I'm gonna follow the raccoon with the annoying voice back into the forest. And uh, we've made it here and it says, shh, look over there. Oh my goodness, it's the ranger, he's sleeping. We'll have to sneak by so he won't hear us. You've got some gigantic footsteps, so you're gonna have to tiptoe. If he sees us, we'll be in big trouble. So let's practice. All right. So I'm going to tap, tap, tap instead of uh, tapping and holding. To sneak past, you simply tap on the screen and you walk past the ranger. And it looks like we got through. We're making our way back again to the campsite. I think now I can run. And... I think probably, yeah, I go back to my house. Now get some sleep before you pass out. I don't want to have to carry you back to your house every night, but I will for a price. <laughs> uh, the raccoon runs away and we can make it back to our house inside and take a sleep. So we'll go to bed uh, because it's night and then come back to the daytime. Um, one of the things about this game is that although you start out in the... I, I, no no true spoilers here, but you start out in the woods and you don't stay there is what I'll say. Uh, you end up going to other places. You end up becoming um, a, the sneaky Sasquatch is sneaky in all sorts of ways, including uh, kind of taking over jobs that maybe once belonged to humans. The Sasquatch is filling those roles and trying to kind of make their way through, uh, through corporate life uh, is, is the hint I'll give. Uh, so it's a very fun game with, a, I think, a, a, it's a really adorable story uh, that has lots of different stuff that you can, you can play. Um, so that is Sneaky Sasquatch, uh, which again, Apple Arcade, $4.99 a month uh, to be able to play this along with the other games that we're covering today as part of Apple Arcade. What's your next one, Rosemary? Well, my next one is based kind of a little bit on my love for Wordle and the fact that I've been enjoying doing lots of word puzzles recently. Um, and it's a great way to increase my vocabulary a little. So I went looking and I found Spell Tower Plus, which has uh, a number of different essentially word search type options. So there's the tarot, the puzzle, um, and you you need to play all of them at least once uh, to, in, to get to do everything. So you need to get um, a row for, or you get a row for every word word that you make. So I, in this particular one, I need to try and make a word, uh, uh, a word on every row, I presume. Um, and then it's going to sort of Tetris or reverse Tetris and that it's going to increase what's on my screen. So I need to uh, try and, and get some of these things off. And so, oops, I will try and get rid of uh, two things or is that going to be, nope, that's not going to help me. Well, I'm just going to keep going here and see if I can try and get rid of some of the uh, more complicated ones, X's and Z's are always really difficult. Um, and there are some letters which will come up and they'll have extra points if you include them. Um, and so if I include this A here, so I'll use the word vast for that, then uh, I get four extra points, which is pretty great. Uh, and I will use, uh, can I do hog? It's too short, darn it. So some of these will let you do three letter words and some of them will only let you do, um, uh, some of them need at least four. Um, I'm going to see, does leet count as a word? 
It does. Mm. I am allowed to use leet. Excellent. Um, which, of course, you know, is, um, you know, uh, a good word. Um, and then I just basically have to keep going to see if I can, um, uh, you know, um, finish this. Um, I am going to uh, save and quit that one. And I'll just uh, show people um, the... Um, the search one, um, which has a different scoring version. So each of these has different scoring methods. Um, and basically um, in this one, there's a star in the middle. That is the letter that I really want to include in a good word. Um, and the the yellow letters would be great to include as well. Um, and so I need something with an I in it. Um, and there's a T, an S, a H, an N, an A, an E, a D, and an E around it. Um, hmm. Uh, can I you can I do hints? I can probably do hints. That's that's not a bad word. And so I got the star. Um, and that was the best word that I've I've managed there because I that was the first word I did. So there we go. Um, um once you've done that, there's daily search, there's daily tower kind of with leaderboard options and so on. Uh there's also some extra modes with uh Zen, double puzzle, bubble puzzle, etc. Um, allowing you to try and compete in various different ways. But if you just want to have some fun, then you can just go into, say, for example, the tower option and see how many uh, words you can try to get. Now, I should note there are a couple of different ways of um, selecting things. So I've just done this one by tapping, and then you double tap on the last letter to complete your word. Um, but you can also do it by dragging. I found tapping a little bit easier, especially when you're dealing with diagonals, which are allowed, and you can do crossing diagonals as well, um, which is very nice if that is sort of thing, the sort of thing that you uh, like to be able to do in these word games. Nice. That's, uh, yeah, I, that's a fun one. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I love being able to do uh, word searches and stuff like that. So. Yeah, my, my Pretty, problem is always cool. that I end up thinking of French and German words that I want to include and I put it in and it's like, no, you're not allowed this word. It's not a real word. And it's like, okay, the, you didn't specify I had to be playing in English. Darn it. <laughs> yeah, what what's going on there? Um, let me, there we go. Uh, it's, it's sometimes the, the mirror works and sometimes it doesn't. This is one of those cases where my clock was backwards, but it's not anymore. Mm -hmm. So we're good. Um, all right. I think uh, we will take a, a quick break before we come back uh, with more. Uh, I want to tell you, I, I talked about this uh I think a couple of episodes ago, and I'm really excited to have them as a sponsor on the network. I think everybody should have a pair uh, of the Ultimate Ears Fits uh, as they are bringing you this episode of iOS today. With how much we rely on our devices, it's easy to forget about the hardware that we're born with, you know, the, the ear. Uh, just like fingerprints, no two ears are exactly alike, and that's why your earbuds probably cause you some level of discomfort or even physical pain after a while. I've heard people complain about, you know, they're wearing their earbuds and uh, it starts to hurt their ears. They have to take them out. They can't keep them in for very long. The Ultimate Ears Fits True Wireless Custom Fit Earbuds from Ultimate Ears are here to change that. Uh, I got a pair of uh, Ultimate Ears Fits in the mail they sent some to me uh, to check out. And it's a pretty cool. It comes in this uh, box and inside there is uh, the little charging case with a USB-C port on the back. Uh, so you can plug in and charge and inside are your Ultimate Ears uh, earbuds. Now, these earbuds feature um, a, a special kind of, of silicone or, or a sort of moldable uh, tip that go inside of your ears. And that makes them so that they fit you perfectly. Uh, it's this really fascinating process where, uh, in fact, one of the things that they say is, hey, as soon as you open this up, you need to start the fitting process because they are uh, essentially uncured tips, meaning that they haven't gone through the curing process to shape them yet and, and hold them in a certain specific shape. So you pop them into your ears, you do this special fit process that we're showing on screen now, and at the end of it, 
then they are molded to fit your ears and your ears in particular. Um, it's kind of a it's kind of a fun process to go along with because it, it's sort of playing music along the way as it's uh, curing the tips inside of your ears, and so you you get to kind of jam out and make sure that the bass sounds good, that kind of thing. Uh, it's a really nice uh, process that that takes place. That's a lot of fun to kind of be a part of. After the the process takes place, then they uh, are made to fit your ears precisely. They're the world's most comfortable earbuds with premium sound and all-day comfort because of the way that they're made. Uh, you can get a guaranteed perfect fit in 60 seconds. Ultimate Ears fits will stay put when you're on the go, but feel ultra comfortable so you can wear them all day long without pain or discomfort. And they use, this is the, the sort of process, it's called light form technology. That's what helps the fits mold to the unique contours of your ear. You put them in, you connect to the app and watch the purple LEDs form the earbuds to your unique shape with eight hours of continuous playback on a single charge and up to 20 hours with the charging case. Ultimate Ears fits are perfect for listening to your favorite shows like this one here all day long. It's built on industry leading expertise trusted by pro musicians and hi-fi enthusiasts uh, for over 25 years. It's engineered to provide a full, warm sound with a tight, punchy low end, and you can set custom EQ presets through the app too. So if you're not happy with the uh, engineered sound, then you can make adjustments to that. Play and pause music and answer calls with the built-in controls and use the free app to set custom actions like your voice assistant, volume adjustment, and more. And what I love is that one of them fit perfectly in my ear, but the other one uh, was not quite right. It uh, was falling out. And so there's a, in the app, there's kind of a process that you can do. Uh, and what ends up happening at the end is they recommend, you know, how to fix it. And the way that it was uh, recommended to fix it for me was a pair of smaller of these, um, these special moldable tips. And they sent them to me for free. Uh, again, it's a guaranteed perfect fit in 60 seconds. And uh, they they back that guarantee. Uh, they sent me the replacements that were smaller. I uh, popped it into the, the right one and did the fit process. And then it fit perfectly. Uh, our ear canals are very unique. Um, if you're fit, if you try your fits and you don't love them as much as uh, we all have, uh, I know that uh, Leo is also pretty happy with his. No worries. Ultimate Ears offers a 30-day money-back guarantee. Plus, you're going to get free shipping, free returns, and a one-year warranty. Whether you use one device all day or you switch between several, it's important to find tools that fit your routine so you can stay productive. Use the promo code iOS at ue.com slash fits. Super easy to remember. ue.com slash fits to get your pair of UE fits. Uh, uh, promo code iOS, that's ue.com slash fits. And don't forget to use that promo code IOS to let them know that I sent you there uh, as I was talking about those very cool earbuds uh, on today's episode. Thank you, Ultimate Ears. And let us get back to the show. Uh, this next app that I want to talk about is a very, it's very much kind of an, an idle um, app, but it is a lot of fun if you like to sort of if you like The Sims, uh, you may like this one. It is, it's a very simple game, um, although you can play it in survival mode that makes it a little bit more difficult, uh, but you're basically just creating a world. So I'm gonna choose start new game and we're gonna name our world, uh, maybe. Oh, there we go. iOS Today. What an interesting name for a world. And now we are loading and says, hi, welcome to Pocket Build. Let's show you the basics of the game. Uh, first, let's teach you how to build. Open the build menu and select the fence. Uh, great, now let's just close up the fence. Press the confirm button to build it. So I'll hit the checkbox to confirm, checkbox to confirm, and checkbox to confirm. Now you know how to build. Felt good, right? Some items will require resources to build. Let's teach you how to gather resources. Press the command icon to open up the human profile. I'm gonna have this human finding wood. You have now commanded your human to go and find wood. They will run to the nearest tree and start chopping wood. You can add trees to collect wood or you can add crops to collect food. You can also spawn more humans from the build menu. You can also control your character, collect resources and explore the world in first person. So here I am now uh, the character itself and I'm chopping this tree, and now I've got wood. Um, the world you build is fully 3D, meaning you can view it from various angles. Use two fingers to swipe up, down, and change the camera angle. 
So now I've got, I'm zooming in and zooming out and I've got uh, the ability to kind of view from a bird's eye view or from the side and rotate to get it exactly how I want. Uh, as I just said, rotate, use your thumb and index finger to rotate the camera, or I was just using uh, my index finger and middle finger. Sweet, now you know how to control the camera. Let's reset the camera. So that's now reset. Uh, those are just the basics. If you need some inspiration, take a look at some of our featured worlds or go to the website moonbear.com for more great resources. So now that I've got this world, and again, I'm playing in sandbox mode, so I've got unlimited resources to use. I can tap the build menu, and I can check out some of the items, uh, like Big Ben, if I wanted to. So let me drop Big Ben into this uh, world, not um, uh, entirely an anachronism, rather. Uh, so we'll drop that there and use this. You can you can change the size of Big Ben uh, the, by scale, or we can uh, rotate Big Ben. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and drop it where it is. We don't need two Big Bens. Just one is fine. Uh, so now Big Ben is in our map. But let's see what else there is. There's some props uh, from London, including a phone box, some lights, uh, some road signs. We can add tiles. So these are kind of your basic ground tiles. Uh, and then once you're doing it, you have options to kind of change uh, colors, shapes, sizes, uh, change choose larger plots of land so that you can make sure uh, that it is kind of uh, wh whatever you're trying to build if you want to kind of build it faster then you can choose larger uh, plots to be able to do that and then the final area are for edges so as you can see uh, back on my map here uh, in order to have drawn those edges you have to use those edge pieces there um, again, fences that could be added, including pathways, bridges and stairs, entrances and supports, um, full on buildings. So if you just wanted to drop a house on your property, you could. Uh, there's all sorts of, of themes for these. So modern homes, Western homes, farm homes, miscellaneous homes. Um, I believe there's also, uh, yeah, birdhouse, uh, teepees, um, homes from ancient Egypt and uh, homes from China, I think is the idea there. Uh, we've also got all sorts of trees and crops. Uh, you can also add gold uh, pieces that basically generate gold. Um, plants, including some mushrooms and trees, grass. There's coral for the, uh, for the water or if you wanted to make like a, you know, an ocean world as well. Some pots, rocks, and mounds. Look, the point is there are lots and lots and lots and lots of different uh, options to add uh, stuff to your camp. And on top of being able to add um, props, you can add people and uh, animals and things like that. So uh, we've got, you know, a lady elf, a knight, uh, a princess, a king, a wizard, a zombie farmer, a businessman, if you're making kind of a more modern place, disco man. Oh, I'm definitely adding disco man to my city. Uh, so I will drop disco man onto the property and let's see what disco man does. I don't know if disco man just starts dancing or what. Let's see. Um, explore, stand still. Okay. So it appears that let's just have disco man explore uh so disco man's looking around and I, maybe if i added a, a dance club then disco man would go in and dance but there are also options to add things like giants uh so why don't we add a dwarf giant to the map and see what happens um and we can change ah look this one can dance there goes the dwarf giant doing doing a little jig uh, if you will. There's also the option to rampage where the um, dwarf giant will go around and destroy the buildings that you've created and also rampage against the humans that you have. There are things like uh, monsters and dragons, fish you can add to your water, uh, and butterflies which can fly around. Uh, it looks like these require some sort of... Um, some sort of barrel purchase. I don't really know what that is, but it appears I'm able to drop it. So now I've got butterflies flying around, which is nice. Um, and tapping anywhere on the map will obviously let you make edits. So it's very easy to create a beautiful world. And this game also has uh, the ability to um, kind of share with other people. So you can see share a screenshot of your world, but there's also, you can publish your world. I can also make it night. 
um, just so you see what that looks like, or auto day and night where it switches back and forth. Um, and the camera, oh, there, there's director mode, so you can kind of get a sweep of your world, uh, as well as the ability to stack items on top of each other. And um, that is, let me go back, uh, that is Pocket Build Plus. Uh, Pocket Build is also available in the App Store on its own. That's the original version that I had. I was super pumped to see it coming uh, come to Apple Arcade as uh, a game there because then you can get all of the fun features that it has right in Apple Arcade. All right, Rosemary, tell me about your next Apple Arcade game. Well, my next Apple Arcade game, there's several of them like this. Um, and uh, so this one is My Young Titan Plus. Um, and I should note that the plus uh, denotion in the App Store for Apple Arcade games usually means that that game is also available for purchase separately, directly from the developer. Um, and there may even be a free version available as well, which is the case uh, for My Young uh, Titan, I believe. Um, but My Young, if you've not played it before, is essentially a matching game with tiles, only it takes it to another level. Level, literally, in that you can have multiple layers of tiles on top of each other. Um, so once I match, for example, these two leaves together, I reveal two tiles underneath, um, which allows me to continue with the matching. This is a very simple Mahjong game. There are some options which are quite nice. You can change, for example, the background uh, to various different ones. So if I wanted a nice mica green, then I could have that. Um, I can also change which tile set. So for example, if I struggle to recognize the standard tile set because uh, maybe I'm not very good at differentiating differentiating between Chinese characters, um, then I could switch to, say, fruit um, and then continue with the fruit. Uh, so I've got some star fruit here and then there's an apple. That looks like passion fruit? No, pomegranate. It's a pomegranate. Uh, I'm really not very good at remembering the names of different fruits, um, especially when I'm podcasting live on air. There's also some prawns in here. Um, I don't think prawns are fruit unless I'm very much mistaken, Micah. Um, you know, tomatoes, I, I understand that that being a thing because they contain seeds, which makes them by definition a fruit. But sushi? Sushi is not a fruit. Why is there sushi in my fruit tile set? But either way, this is a very nice game. It's nice to sit. You can also control whether or not there is music and sound. As you can see, I've got these turned off. Um, and you can also turn on and off showing the free tiles. Um, so if I turn off showing free tiles, then it kind of just looks like everything is available. And it's up to me to know whether or not I can choose something. Um, so you know, that that's an option that you can use to make it more or less difficult if you want to. You can also show the time remaining available. And of course, you do get uh, some extra points if you manage to complete this one it really quickly. Uh, I am not going to complete this in record time because obviously I've been talking uh, to you, to uh, you, uh, the listener and Micah as well as while I do this. But uh, I have completed the entire board and I got no hints um, and I did not have to shuffle the board, which is something else you can do as well. So if you get stuck, then you can have all the tiles shuffled to give you uh, another different view of the, the deck or the board so that you can attempt to solve your, your problem that way. Uh, it's a very simple game. It's a nice one to just sit there and, uh, you know, play while listening to music or something. Ideal while, say, waiting at a doctor's surgery or similar um, or on hold on the phone, as I used it earlier today. Um, but it's a nice, simple game that I love to have in my pocket. Nice, nice. Um, the next one that I will talk about is an oldie but a goodie, a real oldie but a goodie. Uh, and it is one that I had fun playing for quite a while. Um, and they continue to add new adventures and new kind of uh, themes for this game. It's the Oregon Trail. Uh, so this is um, a modern reimagining of the Oregon Trail. Um, I believe I've actually talked about it on the show before. It might have been my pick of the week uh, one week, my, my app cap. Um, but essentially what this lets you do, and I'll choose new game, is play all sorts of versions of the Oregon Trail um, that also now include uh, uh, the ability to play as Native American characters in the Oregon Trail, which was not um, an option in the original version of the game. Uh, I'm going to skip the prologue because we I've played this before. Um, but uh, see, this is one of those options. You have the option to share uh, online if you want to. But again, uh, given that it's an Apple Arcade game, you don't have to uh, play that. 
through. These are some new, as I said, they're always updating it uh, with new additions and, and new kind of tweaks to make the game better. And let us go uh, on just a quick journey. So I think one of the better ones, let's see. Um, we'll do the prologue just so you can kind of see how this works. So it's just one leg of a journey. So we'll tap start journey and it will take us to the Oregon Trail. The year is 1849, and a trio of emigrants has become stranded on their way to independence, the very beginning of the Oregon Trail. Our wagon is stuck. We're low on supplies, and I think my leg is broken. If we don't get help soon, we're done for. Uh, someone approaches on a horse and says, Well, if it isn't a party of stranded greenhorns, my name is Moses Harris. Pleasure to be of assistance. Now let's take a look at what we're dealing with here. And Moses steps off the horse and looks at uh, the folks on the ground. And Moses says, looks like you've got some injuries. Who's in worse shape? And then it says, who should Moses Harris examine? There's Julia and there's David. They are both on the ground. Uh, but it looks like Julia is holding her arm. So it's possible that Julia has a broken arm. Let's find out. I'll tap examine Julia. Julia says, I'm a carpenter. I'm usually good at repairing wagons, but my arm is broken. Oh, who guessed it? Um, should Julia be treated with medicine? Uh, I can reconsider and choose someone else. I'm going to go ahead and treat Julia with medicine and see what happens. So Moses treated Julia with uh, medicine. It says medicine can be used to restore health and help recover from illness or injuries like a broken arm. Uh, you're looking better already, Greenhorn, says Moses. You better get that wagon moving again. Uh, the rain kind of clears up a little bit and says, well, what are you waiting for? If it is, it isn't going to fix itself, you know. <laughs> so he's sort of shouting at them, like, get this wagon fixed. They work together to get the wagon fixed. They jump for joy as the wagon is fixed. And uh, Moses says, it's an improvement, but you should really take better care of your wagon in the future. Where are you going anyway? Uh, we're going to go to Independence. Ah, yes, Independence, the beginning of the famous Oregon Trail. It's not far from here, and I'm heading that way myself. What do you say you join me? We're saved, says the group. And they have a morale boost as they start to walk uh, their way toward the Oregon Trail. Uh, Moses says, something smells good. And uh, the group says, things are looking up. Although they do look a little bedraggled. Uh, as they approach the first stop along the way to Independence, it says, The pleasant scent of frying garlic and onion reaches the party long before the light of the cooking fires. A generous traveler says, Well, I'll be, if it isn't Moses Harris, still, have, still saving travelers on the trail, I see. You look to be in a bad way. I'd be willing to sell you some supplies if you're interested. It's a good deal, just $30. $30? Sorry, that was my saying. Uh, in this economy, uh, Harris says, go ahead, Greenhorn. Saving money is only useful if you, like, if you live to spend it. In exchange for their money, the woman hands over some toolboxes, some clothes, some coffee, and a harmonica. I should teach you how to use those supplies. Let's try repairing your wagon first. And you can use those toolboxes to repair your wagon. So you open the inventory, you move over to your wagon, and you can see there are some red squares and an orange square. Red squares are holes in your wagon, and if, you, if items are on those holes, they will fall out onto the ground. So those are the ones you want to repair first. An orange square is going to become a red square, at which point then it will uh, an item will fall out. So I'll tap on the toolboxes toolbox, I'll choose repair, and then choose the uh, red squares to get rid of those. I, pro tip, I like to stock up on toolboxes quite a bit, because then you don't have to worry about things um, getting lost. Uh, clothes will help with, with your overall hygiene, which keeps you from getting sick. Coffee is an energy booster, and harmonicas are for raising your morale. Uh, I know about all those, so I'm going to choose continue, continue. And the uh, generous traveler says, You look to be in much better shape now. Glad I could help. You're welcome to stay, at a, stay a while if you'd like to rest. And the woman invites the group to join them for a meal. So they all sit down and enjoy a meal together. And uh, 
then they, you can see the plus one uh, party health because they ended up getting food. That is the Oregon Trail. That's just a very small tidbit of the Oregon Trail. Uh, it's a lot of fun to play through the whole thing. Try and see if you can get your characters to the end. Lots of different uh, options for who you bring on the party and what they provide. It's, it's a survival game, and it's uh, quite a bit of fun. Resource management, survival, that kind of thing. Um, all right, Rosemary, tell us about your last uh, Apple Arcade game. Well, my last Apple Arcade game is something I'm sure a lot of people are going to love. It's Sonic Dash. Uh, because, you know, who doesn't love to be a hedgehog and just run around the world? Uh, possibly, literally, there's a couple of different places I've been so far. Um, so as you play Sonic Dash, you're running around. You need to try and collect coins, rescue animals, and uh, you also need to take some stuff out if it is going to attack you. Those were some bombs, I think. Uh, either way, not good. Um, so I'm going to try attacking this one. And, oh, I need to jump because otherwise I'm going to jump into those spikes or run into those spikes, and that would be very much not good for me. Um, so, yeah, essentially you just need to run around and try and do all the things so that you can get points. And as we all know, points mean prizes. Uh, saving animals also gives you points, which is great. Um, so you can uh, hopefully do something decent with that. Um, and then you also get to jump very high up into the air and do some potentially cool uh, stunts, uh, which it will show you how to do occasionally. I was doing the splits in the air earlier as uh, I prepped for the show, which was uh, lots of good fun. Um, I'm going to try. Oh, no, I, I failed. I, I ran into some boxes or I tried to jump over the boxes and apparently I should have gone around uh, because I am Sonic, but I am not supersonic yet. But maybe, maybe by the time next time we talk about Apple Arcade, I will be supersonic. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> Indeed. Um, the last one I just want to give an honorable mention to, uh, not, we don't have time for a demo today, but I did want to talk about a newer game. It's called Gibbon Beyond the Trees. And it's kind of an endless runner game where you play a gibbon that is swinging through the trees. It's a gorgeous looking game. It's a gorgeous sounding game. And uh, it's got a great mechanic that you can play on an iPad, an iPhone, uh, wherever. It's just some simple tapping options uh, to kind of keep uh, pulling yourself along. And the game developers actually tried to, to the best of their ability, match the uh, actual physics and mechanics of how gibbons swing through trees in real life uh, in creating this game. There's a name for it, um, the particular sort of phenomena of of uh physics that the um that the gibbons use but I, I can't recall it off the top of my head in any case uh as i said a really gorgeous game uh to to play sounds amazing and uh it's a lot of fun and very simple to kind of get uh hang on things as you are playing through and i guess that is a bit of a uh of a, of a pun if you will all right mm -hmm. folks um that brings us to the end of the Apple Arcade uh, walkthrough or tour of some of the games that we like to play or some of the newer games that are there on the platform. Again, $4.99 a month to check out Apple Arcade uh, if you haven't claimed your free trial yet. If, uh, or if you have claimed your free trial already, if you haven't claimed your free trial yet, check it out uh, for free and play a bunch of games to see if it's worthwhile for you. So many different games. And uh, if you're part of a family plan, then everybody can play the games in Apple Arcade as part of your uh, family subscription. So that's nice as yeah. well. All yeah, right, let's take uh, a quick... Something Go ahead. I was just going to say, it's something I've recommended to my parents when they've been traveling before that they pay for Apple Arcade um, for, for a month because then it's $5, but they've got all the games and they all work offline, which is great on planes, whether or not you're paying for the Wi-Fi connection, which will certainly cost you more than the Apple Arcade subscription. Yes, that is uh, a really pro tip. All right, we will take a quick break before we come back with the news, uh, Shortcuts Corner, and of course, our app caps. Uh, this episode of iOS Today is brought to you by Buck Mason. I talked about Buck Mason before uh, on this show, and I was wearing at the time a uh, shirt that uh, was a Buck Mason shirt. Uh, we all have our favorite go-tos, right? You know, you've got your favorite shirts, your favorite sweater, your favorite jeans, the stuff you wear all the time. Well, you may find that Buck Mason 
provides you with your favorite go-tos. Uh, Buck Mason's clothes are second to none because they are, the, the clever thing about Buck Mason is that they've chosen styles that are timeless. Uh, these styles are ones that you can count on no matter what. You know, by keeping it uh, to these kind of, these simple choices, you can make sure that, yeah, I mean, is a t-shirt that has a nice hemline going to go out of style? No. Is a button-up shirt with uh, pockets going to go out of style? No. These things are going to be able to last you a long time. That's the other thing. They uh, are really good quality meaning that they will last you a long time. Um, what's nice is, you know, you check out the sizing chart. And in doing so, you can make sure that you get the size that's right for you. That way, it will uh, fit you right out of the box. And no matter how many times you wash it, it's going to continue to fit. Uh, it's going to fit you perfectly, exactly how you want it to. Uh, Buck Mason makes all the essentials. They've got jeans, they've got shirts, they've got jackets. Uh, so it's all the stuff you're after. And of course, one of the best things is that they've got this really nice tailored look and fit uh, for their t-shirts so that if you, you, know, you wear them a lot, you wash them, they're going to look just as tailored as they were on day one. The curved hem tee is uh, one of their most popular items and GQ loves it as much uh, as, as we do here at Twit and calls it the best t-shirt in the game with good reason. That really nice curved hem looks so nice. It just, uh, it looks very good um, the way that it, it drapes and, and sort of fits uh, against a pair of pants. Um, Buck Mason sent me some, some clothes to check out, uh, including my now favorite pair of sweatpants. Um, they've got a, a nice uh, sort of pairing between a, there's a hoodie, a, a hooded sweatshirt and a pair of sweatpants. And I got them both in the same color. So I've got this whole kind of sweatsuit that is so comfortable and you can, it's very durable, very high quality stuff. Uh, there in fact is the, uh, hooded sweatshirt that I have, uh, with these huge drawstring, um, drawstrings around the hood, which I like, um, nice, nice long drawstrings that you can really uh, make adjustments with. And you put it on and you're like, oh, wow. Now, I, like, I understand now. This really high quality material, uh, the, the, you know, the, the panels that come together to make the clothing, it's not just kind of a one piece of cloth that they've uh, lazily sewn on either end. No, they, uh, they've, they've tailored these things. They've made them fit and finish. And you can really tell uh, that that's the case. Once you try Buck Mason, they'll become your go-tos too. Head over to buckmason.com slash iOS and get a free t-shirt with your order. That's B-U-C-K-M-A-S-O-N.com slash iOS to get a free t-shirt with your first order. Buckmason.com slash iOS. Of course, you can Google Buck Mason and get there, but we really ask, please use that URL, buckmason.com slash iOS. By doing so, you help us out by letting them know that you heard it here and you said, oh, Micah was talking about these, uh, this, these sweatpants and I want to get a free t-shirt. So I used that uh, URL, buckmason.com slash iOS. Thank you, Buck Mason, for sponsoring this week's episode of iOS Today. All right, back to the show. I am very sad. One of my favorite apps, um, Deliveries, I've talked about Deliveries before. I know Rosemary's a Parcels fan, uh, Parcel fan, but I, I use Deliveries. It's especially good for people in the United States uh, as a delivery tracking app. And this app uh, made by the folks at June Cloud um, is a simple app for tracking items that you are getting from Amazon, from uh, FedEx, from UPS, from USPS. Basically, you copy the um, tracking number from whatever service, you pop it into deliveries, and deliveries will keep track of the item every step along the way. They show you this nice uh, map showing where your package has gone. It's one of my favorite ways to keep track of uh, Apple devices. So I was able to know, okay, here's where my Mac Studio is right now and how long it'll be until I'll get it, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, deliveries put out a blog post over on June Cloud talking about... Um, the uncertain future of the app, uh, essentially saying that as things, uh, as, as the process continues, as, as life goes on, the different delivery services, FedEx, UPS, etc., are in many ways closing off uh, the functionality of their tracking services for third-party uh, platforms. So what does all that mean if you're going, what is the third-party platform? What? Basically, uh, the way that deliveries works is by talking to 
FedEx, by talking to UPS, by talking to the United States Postal Service behind the scenes in order to pull that information that tells you, oh, this is where my package is, this is where it's going, this is how long it's going to take to get there, etc. And unfortunately, they these companies, uh, you know, obviously deliveries doesn't make it clear which ones are and which ones aren't, are making it less possible for deliveries to be able to communicate with these uh, services behind the scenes and say, hey, tell me what's going on. And instead, want you to use their apps, their mm-hmm. services to track these items. And it's no surprise, I have um, over time kind of felt this and not not sort of front of mind wise, but in the back of my mind, because I was just after I read this article the other day, I had this realization of like, I have the FedEx app installed on my phone. I have the UPS app installed on my phone. I have USPS's informed delivery installed on my phone, even though I have deliveries. Why is that? Well, that's because they, at this point, in many cases, provide functionality that I can no longer get using deliveries or using another package tracking app. And that is because they want you to be using their services, their systems, and also because... uh, any work that they do on what's called the API, that is, uh, for folks who don't know, the thing that I was talking about, the behind the scenes way of communicating, is money spent. And if they don't see it justified to spend that money, then they are and looking for ways to cut costs, then not messing with the API is one of the ways to, not worrying about the API anymore is one of the ways to kind of cut costs. So yeah, I'm, I'm bummed. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm curious if Parcel... Uh, feels the same way and is not saying, you know, that that's the case yet. Yeah, yeah. Parcel has got direct um, integration, for example, with Amazon, if you sign into your Amazon account. Um, and the way it's doing that, as best I can tell, and this is speculation on my part, is essentially it's scraping uh, the web page on a regular basis from your account, from your orders um, with with Amazon, so that that's how it gets the information. Um, and there is one thing that I would like to say, because technically, yes, uh, development costs money. And so doing things like keeping an API up to date and so on costs money, but it doesn't need to cost any more money than just running FedEx. They could be consuming their own API to do things like run their website and run their their apps and things like that. There is no reason that says that they have to have separate internal and external ones. Um, so I do think it is just a case of we don't want third party developers to be able to compete with us and keep track of things because also, um, you know, I'm sure there are some people out there who enterprising as they are using um, it to track thousands of parcels that they're sending on a weekly basis and automatically uh, putting claims for any that have been delayed instead of having a person do it manually. Um, but, you know, I, I think that it's a real shame that this is happening to deliveries. And I really wish um, that, um, you know, all develop, uh, all delivery companies would just let you track things in whatever way you like. For me, it's just incredibly helpful to be able to just keep track of, for example, Kickstarter uh, projects that I backed, which I, I know it's going to ship, but I don't yet have a tracking number. That's something I can do in deliveries. I can put it in and then when I get the tracking number, I can update it. That's not something I can do with FedEx because I don't know if it's going to ship with FedEx. Um, and quite frankly, FedEx isn't that popular over here in the UK anyway, um, at least when it comes to consumer stuff. So I guess we've just got to wait and see and hope that maybe some of these uh, people uh, change their minds or the people making these decisions realize that maybe actually save a buck in consumer and API and make it available to other people. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. Um, All right, let's uh, move along here. Um, Apple is making an update in the next version of uh, iOS 15 um, that basically renames iTunes Pass. Like, what is iTunes Pass uh, these Mm -hmm. days? I don't. Why? What? Who? iTunes? Who? So (laughs) that is finally getting a change um, to make it your Apple account uh, card instead of your iTunes Pass card. Yes. Yeah. I think it's just one of those things where iTunes has been rebranded. It still exists on Windows just about, um, but it's it's not around anymore. So it makes sense to rename it. Um, and I don't know, maybe this will help with some of the confusion of when people bought like uh, App Store gift cards versus uh, Apple gift cards um, and tried to use one for the other and it didn't work um, and so on and so forth. Who knows? Um, but it's it's being renamed and that's that's probably about time. 
I agree. It, uh, yeah, that I think that was more like a, oh, right. We forgot about that. <laughs> Need yeah, to make a change yeah, to yeah. that. Yep. Um, what's this next one about watching out for phishing emails? Tell us about that. Yeah. So this is more of a just gem- general, like, keep an eye out. Um, because uh, if you, especially if you use the Apple Mail app on your iPhone or iPad, it will warn you um, at the top of the email if it thinks that something is phishing or spam and, and uh, just attempt to be careful. But essentially, MailChimp, which is a service that is used to send lots of newsletters, lots of different companies use them. Uh, they got hacked. Um, And so you probably just want to keep an eye out for email that you receive, even if it is from somebody who you have subscribed to, just to make sure that it is very definitely, uh, you know, what is expected. Um, I'd like to take this moment to remind people that um, if you tap and hold on a link on iOS, then it will show you what is behind that without opening it first. So I'm just going to open the the Twit app uh, to show people how to, uh, the Twit um, app, a website. So if I tap and hold, for example, on schedule here, then I can actually see at the top where this is linking to, and it is linking to twit.tv, um, which is good because a lot of people do put, you know, uh, bad links in emails. Obviously, they're not going to be on the Twit website. Our uh, developers are on top of that, making sure that that is not going to be compromised. But just keep an eye out and uh, tell your friends and relatives to uh, keep an eye out on their emails that they're receiving as well. And if they get anything that seems suspicious, yeah, maybe, maybe just a uh, keep an eye, uh, maybe don't, don't click on it and go see what else is available. Yes. Um, now, this, this little bit of uh, rumor is a fascinating one. Apple mm-hmm. appears to have accidentally revealed, uh, thanks to a support document online, uh, the, a, a wireless, not a wireless charger, a USB-C charger uh, that it could be releasing soon. Uh, this is a dual usb char- d- mm-hmm. Let me try that again. This is a dual USB-C charger, uh, which would be the first one from the company to have two ports on it, uh, 35 watts of charging. And interestingly, Apple, um, if this is uh, indeed going to be released, Apple has um, put the the two charging ports side by side, and it also comes with a fold-down prong uh, to to actually plug into the wall, similar to the... um, MacBook Pro style brick chargers uh, of of yesteryear. So this is this is fascinating. Um, oh, and so the nine to five Mac article did not have the actual image of it, uh, but there was. Let me see if I can find now that link so we can show you uh, what it appears the um, the actual device will look like based on what um, what the person. F- uh, found online. So yeah, I'm having trouble finding it's in it. Mac but, um, World, I believe it was. Um, I'm just putting the link in the chat room excellent. for folks. Um, so uh, yeah, it, it, it looks like it's, uh, it's, it's different to other two USB-C port chargers um, in the respect that, you know, these, these, these are adjacent to one another and so stacked on top of one another. Yes. Normally, if you have multiple ports, then they're stacked. So like each port is horizontal, but you'll have them in, in, a, in a vertical line. Um, and this, this is different, which is good. Um, I'm very curious as to, uh, you know, Apple finally releasing this now, because I know this is a frequent complaint for travelers um, that mm-hmm. they can't use Apple chargers because it's only got one USB-C port on it, or it's only got one port on it, let alone USB-C or USB-A or whatever it is. Um, and so I'm I'm glad to see Apple doing this. Um, personally, I'm, I'm still probably going to stick with my combination of Satechi, Anchor, etc. chargers because right. I've already got those and they've already got all the ports on them. But for somebody, for people like, for example, my parents who don't have as many devices as I do or travel with as many devices as I do, uh, this would be a great thing for them to just have, um, especially, you know, for people that have a tendency to keep a phone charger or similar in their bag. Uh, this would be an excellent upgrade um, mm-hmm. for for them because then they can charge two things. Um, and it, it's always nice to be able to make a friend um, when you're charging things. I've done that at <laughs> airports before. Somebody's had like, you know, one of those old five watt iPhone chargers plugged in and I've been able to say, hey, uh, do you mind if I plug my charger in and you can plug into my charger and it's good charge your device faster? Um, Much faster. I've never had anybody say no to that and they've always been pleasantly surprised when their phone charges ridiculously quickly um, in comparison <laughs> to the five watt that they've been, they've experienced before. So yes, this is um, a, a great thing that uh, Apple 
hopefully, fingers crossed, will release soon. I agree. Um, it's also interesting that there are the divots on the side. That is um, mm. not this 100% is, Apple style. Well, this is the same as the 20 watt um, USB-C charger that you would get with the HomePod uh, right now, the HomePod mini. Um, it's the same as the one that comes in the box there, except for the fact that it's got a second port on the bottom by the looks of it. Um, and that also, fingers crossed, means that just like that USB-C uh, charger um, and the original Apple Watch charger, it'll have folding prongs here in the UK as well, which is a rarity. Yeah, I've, I've read that those are pretty rare. Um, yeah. That's good that yeah. You'll, yeah. you'll have those. All right, Fingers folks, crossed. that brings us to the end of the news segment. And I believe I can hear the music for Shortcuts Corner. This is Shortcuts Corner, the part of the show where you write in with your shortcuts requests. And Rosemary Orchard, the shortcuts expert, provides a response. Uh, Before we get into the Shortcuts Corner requests, though, there is a little news item that I thought you would want to talk about. Um, I know I saw Matthew Casanelli jumping for joy about this. So tell us what's changed in Shortcuts. Well, this change is actually, it's shortcuts related, but it's technically shortcuts for the Mac because a while ago, shortcuts on iOS got support, or rather the iWork apps on iOS got support for shortcuts with being able to open documents and do things like append a row to uh, a numbers sheet, for example. And now short, uh, iWork on the Mac has also brought shortcuts automation support with the ability to open documents, create documents, um, open presentations in rehearsal or show mode, for example, and adding rows to the top or the bottom of a table for numbers, which is great. Uh, I'm glad to see more and more of the stock Apple apps adding support for these. Um, and it's it's lovely to, to know that more and more things are coming there. So if you have been looking um, at shortcuts on the Mac and going, hmm, I, I don't know, I want to like create a pages document and I can't do that, Take another look with the uh, latest release of Pages and the entire iWork suite. You are able to do that. Nice. Uh, that is fun. And uh, I, yeah, I when I saw that, I'm like, oh boy, I know some folks are going to know some great things to do with these. All right. Uh, the first request comes in from Victor. Victor writes, hello there, Rosemary and Micah. I am curious if shortcuts for iOS can assist me in more easily creating and publishing a new post to a Jekyll blog. My current workflow is a template in Bear, which I copy and paste into a new note, fill in the appropriate front matter or post content, then export to files as a markdown document document and finally publish using working copy. An ideal shortcut would display a series of text fields which I could use to fill in the post title, date and time, category tags, and URL for linked list style posts, and then populate the corresponding front matter. Is this or something remotely close to this even possible to achieve? Thank you kindly. Really enjoy the show each week. Uh, Love to your mothers, Victor. Thank you, Victor. Um, Rosemary, it looks like there's a link in the show notes, so you got something. Oh, yes, I've got something. So I did just want to say uh, to Victor that uh, one application I definitely recommend for looking at things like this and specifically for writing uh, blog posts is actually um, drafts because the automation support in drafts for text is amazing. But you asked for shortcuts, so I've done shortcuts. Um, And so I will just pop open my iPhone uh, here and quickly go to the right shortcut, which I've, of course, uh, made in advance of the show. So I've got a Jekyll post uh, uh, shortcut here. And I just want to give a little bit of a background about Jekyll for people who are going, wait, I, I don't really understand what's going on here. Maybe they have, uh, you, maybe you've used WordPress before, maybe you have no idea. Essentially, every single post that you put on a Jekyll website is a, just a text file. And at the top, you've got three dashes, and then you've got a series of keys and values. And so, for example, title would be a key, and then you have colon, and then you'd have whatever the title of the blog post is. Same with um, the date, uh, categories, and so on and so forth. Now, categories, tags are a little special because uh, they are arrays of um, te- uh, of words, but that's a problem I'm going to leave to solve for Victor because obviously Victor knows Victor's blog best. Um, but what I've done here is I have put together uh, some things where we've got a list um, and Victor said something interesting, which was that the URL may or may not actually be something that 
he wants to include. So I've put together title, date, category, URL. You can add text to this by just tapping add new item and then typing in text. Um, and then when you run the shortcut, it will pop up and ask you which of these you want to include. So if you don't want to include a URL or a category, for example, you can uncheck those. So I'm actually going to uh, leave this with the title, the date and the text, and then I'll tap done. And then it's going to ask me for the title. So I can say, hello world is my title and tap done. And then date and this, you should probably input a properly formatted date, but I'm just going to put in tomorrow uh, for the time being. And then tags, and I will just put in hello, com, uh, comma, and then world again, because that's the example I'm going with today. And then I've chosen to create a draft with this, um, and I'm running the beta of drafts, but this is what um, I've output as the result. So we've got the title, we've got the date, and we've got the tags. Now, of course, there is a flaw in this, in that um, the date didn't have a date picker. And so what you could do is you could um, have a separate ask for input um, and instead of asking for text, ask for a date and then just input that in here um, separately. That's a possibility. It really depends on what it is you want to do. For my own personal Jekyll blog, I've got a system which I've set up in drafts where I can get all the tags and the categories so I can choose from those. But that is something that you would then need to customize your blog for, which might be something that you're up for, Victor, might not be. Um, either way, feel free to uh, get back in touch with us to find out a little bit more about that if you want to. Uh, the other thing that I've done is I went diving on the internet because of course I did and I have found uh, a blog post. It's from 2019, but it's still uh, accurate and still works today on publishing to Jekyll from your iPad using shortcuts, um, which we will include a link to in the show notes because I think that that will probably be quite useful. It uses working copy uh, to publish to your the uh, GitHub repo where hopefully your um, your blog is stored, making that nice and easy. But there we go. That should be the solution, fingers crossed. Nice. That's fantastic. And of course, again, link will be in the show notes. Um, one more. This one comes from Doug. Doug says, good afternoon. I love your show and really enjoy the interplay between you two. Thanks, Doug. I would love my phone to go mute to, well, let me try that again. I would love my phone to mute while in meetings. I know I can do this by manually flipping the mute switch, but I would rather this happen automatically. I do not want to disable all notifications I, as I want to see the notifications as they appear on my screen during a meeting. I just don't want the phone to make any noise or vibration. Vibration. I'm not a strong shortcut or automation user, but I have looked for something like this, but have, have had no luck finding it yet. Uh, thank you for all you do, especially Rosemary. I know podcasting is not Rosemary's main gig, and I really appreciate you being so generous with your time appearing on several uh, uh, shows that I enjoy listening to. I agree. Thank you for being so generous with your time. Um, well, thank do you, you have some well, thoughts for, for Doug for this one? Yes, I do. Um, and this is one of those things where I looked at a bunch of options, including focus modes, because uh, what you can do with a focus mode is if you're in an event and you um, go to turn on a focus mode, then I can say, uh, turn this on until the end of this event. Um, and that's something that um, is easy to do, but that doesn't actually turn off the volume um, and it's potentially is going to limit various different um, notifications that come through depending on how you configure things. Um, and the problem that we have on the phone specifically is this little guy on the side, which is this physical silent switch. And that is intended to be there and it's deliberately a physical switch so that you know just by glancing at the outside of your device whether or not you are in uh, silent mode or not. So the best solution that I've come up with is not a good one, unfortunately. Um, and that is using a shortcuts action to set the volume to 0%. But that is not necessarily going to affect the right volume for you. Um, so my personal recommendation for you, Doug, is actually going to be to have a look at the focus modes and uh, play with those because that is going to be much easier to automatically enable. I know that what I've done, for example, on my Mac, especially when I'm presenting, I have um, various different things that I, I turn on or off. And one of them, I use an app called Bunch and it runs a shortcut which turns on my presenting focus mode so that when I'm actually you know, screen sharing or something. Um, it disables a whole bunch of apps um, and notifications, which might help with this. 
But other than that, it's going to be kind of tricky to automatically turn something on and off with different meetings. Um, and so I would really love it if any of our listeners have got suggestions, uh, if they could um, share those with us so that we can share them back to you. All right. Uh, let's head into uh, feedback and questions, and then we'll round things out with our app caps. Uh, Keith writes in, um, hi, Micah and Rosemary. Wondering if you could do a session on IoT devices on HomeKit and usability. I've been watching since Sarah Lane iPad Today days and living in the UK. One of the few Twitch shows I can watch live along with Rosie. My, oh, my God. Along with Rosie, my spaniel. Hello, Rosie. Uh, who is probably more knowledgeable than me. Please keep up the good work. Kind regards, Keith. Keith, oh, my God. I oh I send us a photo of Rosie. I want to see Rosie. Yeah, um, yeah. We need the dog tax. <laughs> we do. We absolutely do. Uh, yes. If you pay the dog tax, no, we're, I'm kidding. We'll um, we'll we'll put it on your tab because next week we are going to do a HomeKit episode. We're going to talk about HomeKit automation. We're going to talk about HomeKit devices that we have. We're going to talk about um, sort of different ways that we make use of them. Rosemary is the perfect person to talk to about this in particular because Rosemary's got a lot of special magic that she does. So uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And let's uh, move on to Jane's uh, question. Well, I did just want to say I, oh, um, ahead, one thing uh, quickly, which is if you've got a question about HomeKit, then email it in, uh, tweet at us, whatever you like, so that we can include that and the answer to it in next week's show um, as well, because we would love to answer all of your questions um, in, in one go. So yes, fingers crossed we get a, a picture of Rosie sometime soon. Indeed. Um, Jane writes in, Hi, Mike and Rosemary. Love your show and have listened to it faithfully since the beginning. I recently bought a new iPad Pro 12.9 inch to replace my aging iPad and I love it. Congrats, that's such a good device. I have discovered my Joby iPad mount won't accommodate my new iPad. Is there a mount you would recommend? I typically mount it on a camera tripod. Also, I'm looking to find a good lighting solution for my video calls. I've looked at Loom and Elgato. I sometimes use my oh, LumiCube uh, for photo work on my iPhone and I'm looking toward the Elgato with the eye towards an Elgato mini controller in the future. I have low vision, so the thought of having easier to read large buttons for lighting, video, and audio control is of interest. I would appreciate your thoughts about iPad mounts and lighting as well as controllers. Jane from Maine. Uh, P.S. My desktop OS is Windows 10. I use my iPad Pro for video conferences and other video work. Can I use a physical controller like uh, the the Stream Deck with my iPad Pro. I use the iPad Pro when doing video as my display. One day I'd like to use my iPhone as a video source to my iPad Pro if possible. Um, so there's a lot going on there. Uh, some things that are possible, some things that aren't. Um, what you can do is, I, I absolutely recommend the, um, uh, the Stream Deck and the uh, lights that Elgato makes. Um, I have, in fact, that is my lighting setup. I have, um, what is it even called? The I, I can't remember what they what they're called. There, the, there it is. Thank you. Key lights. Yeah. Um, so the Elgato key lights. Uh, I have them. They are incredibly bright. Uh, they are. You can change the color temperature, and they're pretty cost effective for what you get. You get some very nice. Um, I think they use Ofram uh, LEDs inside. And there are different versions now. There's the key light, the key light air, and I think there's a mini or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it's called. Uh, yeah, the key light mini. And all of the different options are good options with incredible light uh, for their size. Uh, the key light air is very bright as well. Um, so I definitely can recommend those. I'm curious, Rosemary, about your recommendations. Yeah, so specifically looking for mounts for the 12.9 inch uh, iPad Pro, I actually had two of them on episode 595. I had the Magflot uh, magnetic iPad Pro stand where the 12.9 inch iPad Pro just magnetizes onto it. That might be worth um, looking into. Um, and so I, I would recommend looking at that. The 12.9 inch, you may struggle to find mounts that specifically fit on a tripod. Um, so, but there are some on Amazon, unfortunately. I am not in the US, so my Amazon links over here um, are not, they don't translate um, for the few things that I've tried over the years. Um, so it might just be worth having a look and uh, maybe trying and using Amazon's return policy if it doesn't work out for you. Um, the only thing that I will say is you are not going to be able to use your, your iPhone as an input 
for your iPad or an Elgato Stream Deck on the iPad at the very least at the moment. That may change with iOS 16 or possibly 17. We don't know what the future holds for us yet. Um, but right now, uh, it can't be used as an input or a controller on that device. So you are going to want to plug it into your Windows machine um, to, to use it there. Um, though you can use your iPhone um, or iPad as video input on those Windows machines, which might be worth looking into uh, for that. Um, and there's a couple of different options for that, um, using things like OBS studios and so on. But it really depends on what you're trying to do um, as to whether or not you'll be easily able to accomplish it. All right. Um, with that, it's time for App Caps. <laughs> This is the part of the show where we wear caps atop our heads to honor our app picks, app or gadget picks of the week. These are the apps or gadgets we are using now that we want to share with all of you. Um, Rosemary Orchard, tell us about the cap atop your head, which is delightful, and then tell us about your app cap. <laughs> Well, the cap atop my head, I'm not sure it counts as a cap or as a hat. It's an umbrella with like a headband on it. It's also the most uncomfortable hat in the world. So I'm probably not going to be wearing it much longer past my app cap. Um, but it is, you know, it's it's kind of, it's got the different colors on there. It's got red, it's got yellow, it's got blue, it's got green. Um, and I don't have to hold an umbrella whilst doing iOS a day. So I'm going to call that a win. Um, and it was $2.99 on Amazon. So I'll call that a, a separate kind of win. Um, and my app today is Soro for Sonos. So Soro for Sonos, the entire purpose of the app, uh, which is $7.99 in the App Store, is to add really good shortcut support for Sonos so that you can do things like change, for example, what's in the playlist on Sonos without having to use the Sonos app, which sometimes can be uh, a little less than amazing um, for it. And that means that also, if you do things like put NFC tags around your house, then you can just tap your phone to something and then it will run whatever the shortcut is. And Soro can control your Sonos. So if you look in the Soros, uh, the Soro app, then it's got a couple of different example shortcuts that you can get. So for example, controlling the volume of specific speakers, playing favorites, browsing music library, muting, skipping, party mode, um, etc. Um, and then if we pop over to the shortcuts app, which is, of course, where all the magic happens, then we can see, oh, my gosh, that is a humongous list of all of the different uh actions available to control Sonos via shortcuts um, through the Soro app. So for example, you can do things like set relative volume, you can load a queue, you can load music and favorites, you can group rooms together and ungroup rooms, which is something that you can't do so easily um, just, you know, well, you can do it manually through the so the Sonos app, but you're you're gonna if you've got certain groups that you create regularly and then br break up, then that's not going to be um, it's something that you're going to want to do manually all the time. You can also get information. So, for example, you can get current playback information, and this is really great, especially if you've got an older Sonos um, system where you don't have AirPlay on all of your devices, but they're still great speakers. You don't want to get rid of them. Well, Soro can helpfully come to the rescue and allow you to, you know, do things like clear your queue or get all of your BAM camp purchases, group rooms, play some music, and generally control things in an automated but fun fashion. You can also go completely nuts with this and integrate with something like Widget Pack to build your own custom widgets for Sonos. I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing that, but it is pretty great to be able to set, for example, the TV sound settings via Sonos. Um, of course, I don't actually have a Sonos soundbar, sadly, but I do have some wall art, which is the IKEA Symphonisk wall art. Um, and so I w can... Um, you know, set that. Um, I can set night sound, I could set speech enhancement, um, and I can choose whether or not I see the action when it runs. So basically, this is a great app. It is not cheap, but also if you've already invested in the Sonos ecosystem and you do just want a way to automatically control Sonos through shortcuts, then it's a worthy investment. Nice. All right. Definitely check that out. Um, today, I am wearing a head wrap atop my head. I do put whenever I uh, do a deep conditioning treatment on my hair, I will typically put uh, a head wrap of some sort on. Uh, it's silk, and so it keeps my hair protected uh, while I sleep. So I thought 
I would show a little of my personal life in my uh, app cap for today. Um, <clears throat> The app cap that I want to talk about is one that folks may know about, but I wanted to mention it because it is uh, there. There have been some new additions to the uh, to the the system. So this is Duck Duck Go, the privacy browser, and it is a browser that lets you surf the web while maintaining your privacy. It has a lot of different protections in place uh, to keep your information from kind of being tracked across the web uh, and including this button that is a kind of burn it all down button. Uh, it says personal data can build up in your browser. Yuck. Use the fire button to burn it all away. Give it a try now. When I tap that button, it completely clears all of the data that's been saved uh, in with the browser and also the tabs that I've been to before. Uh, so now we'll go back to uh, the site. Although, okay, there we go. Went back to the site. But the reason that I wanted to talk about this is uh, actually two reasons. Uh, it's available to download for free from the App Store for your iPhone or your iPad. It is not on the Mac, um, the, the DuckDuckGo privacy browser. Or I should say, it's not on the Mac right now. Um, there is a Mac app in the works so that you can use the DuckDuckGo uh, privacy browser on your Mac as well. Um, it is... There's currently a Safari extension that you can install for DuckDuckGo on your Mac if you want to uh, be able to have those privacy protections in place uh, without the browser. But I'm really pumped to see that uh, DuckDuckGo is working on a browser for the Mac itself. Um, and I signed up for the beta, so hopefully I can join that. The other thing that I wanted to mention, though, is a really cool feature uh, from DuckDuckGo called Email Protection. And uh, email protection is uh, a lot like Apple's uh, masked email service. And uh, for folks who use one password along with Fastmail, you may also be aware of the masked email services there. What it does is it lets you create kind of one-time emails that are linked to specific um, to specific accounts. So. What um, DuckDuckGo is doing is they are serving as the way for you to create uh, an email address and have that be linked to, if I sign up for a new account and I'm worried about that company spamming me, I can make sure that the only emails that ever get sent to that account are through uh, that one email. And that way I can just ditch that email if I'm tired of getting emails uh, to that address. And it also means that I can hold these companies accountable if they say, we're not going to share your information with anyone. And suddenly I'm getting emails from a bunch of different places. Um, so uh, DuckDuckGo's email protection service says, uh, we do not save your emails. Basically, you have an email address for DuckDuckGo, both for masked email, but also you can have one just uh, that, that is sort of your official email. Mine is micah at duck.com, which is kind of fun. Um, when we receive an email to a duck.com address, we immediately process it by removing the trackers and then forward it to its destination. This all happens in memory so that the emails are never written to disk. So the email goes to your duck.com email. At that point, the trackers are removed from it and then it gets moved on. But it is volatile memory, meaning that as soon as that system is off, then it cannot be stored. Uh, when using the service, the only personal information we save is your forwarding email address and the duck addresses you create. So Mike at duck.com, which forwards to my personal email. Those are both saved, obviously, because they need to be able to process the email and get it sent to the right place. We do not use your personal information for any purpose unrelated to this service. So they don't sell your information and they only disclose information if they are legally forced to do so. And in that case, they will go to court to fight against those disclosures. They do not use third-party email services to forward your emails. That means that they themselves are in control of that. They're not uh, pawning that off on someone else. And again, because that stuff is stored in, um, in volatile memory, it's kind of hard for any of that stuff to be kind of pulled from their systems as well. Uh, if you decide to delete your account, you can do that and they will delete it immediately and remove everything. Uh, and what I love too is that DuckDuckGo always puts in their uh, sort of terms and services, hey, even if this company is owned by another company, we will not, we would rather die than to let that company uh, sort of, sort of change the way that we uh, consider your privacy protections. So I think the email protection thing is very cool. 
Um, and for folks on Android, uh, DuckDuckGo has a special uh, thing built into its DuckDuckGo browser there that will do a lot of the app privacy protection stuff on Apple's system, but instead on Android. So love DuckDuckGo, love what they do. Um, email protection is something worth signing up for, uh, checking out. So any emails that get sent to Micah at duck.com, they pull all of the trackers out of that email before it gets forwarded along to my email, which is very handy uh, and make sure that I am, you know, keep staying safe in that way. And then also uh, looking forward to checking out the Mac app. But in t- until then, you can always download it on your iPhone and your iPad. All right, folks. That brings us to the end of this episode of iOS Today. Uh, If you have questions, feedback, et cetera, as we mentioned, or dog tax to uh, file, iOS Today at twit.tv. Tax day, I think, is Monday, so get your dog tax in before that. Um, Watch live, if you'd like, by going to uh, twit.tv slash live uh, every Tuesday at 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, so you can uh, join us and uh, enjoy the show there. Uh, Or you can subscribe to the show by going to twit.tv slash iOS and clicking to subscribe. You can subscribe to the audio version of the show or the video version of the show, but that's a great place for you to head in order to uh, sign up for the, um, on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, et cetera. Um, I need to remove that. Uh, voicemail option there. That's that's not a thing at all anymore. Um, and we thank you all for writing in your feedback, for subscribing to the show. If you want all of our shows ad-free, uh, there is a way to do that. You can check out Club Twit for seven bucks a month. You get every single Twitch show ad-free. Yes, uh, all the Twitch shows, all ad-free. You get access to the members-only Twit Plus bonus feed that has extra content you won't find anywhere else, including, I believe, a recent AMA with Paul Therott, uh, one with our web engineer, Patrick Delahanty, and more to come soon, and access to the members-only Discord server. That's the place where you can go to chat with your fellow Club Twit members, but also those of us here at Twit. It's a great place to sort of have a... Uh, a you know, personal conversations with uh, Twit hosts and and producers and and all sorts of folks there, and then your uh, fellow Club Twit members. Ah, it's so nice. Twit.tv slash Club Twit, seven bucks a month, and you, of course, will be supporting us directly, which is even uh, more awesome. And uh, we heard that some folks wanted to support their favorite shows directly and weren't kind of concerned about all the the extra stuff. If you use Apple Podcasts, you can uh, type in iOS today, find the audio version of the feed, and subscribe for two ninety nine a month. When you subscribe, you will get an ad-free version of the audio feed. So that's a great way to uh, support us too. Rosemary Orchard, if folks want to follow you online and check out all your great work, where do they go to do so? The best place to go is rosemaryorchard.com, which has links to all the things I do online, including the other podcasts, which uh, some of the people writing kindly mentioned today. Um, and of course, you can find me on Twitter at Rosemary Orchard. And if you're a Club Twit member, you can frequently find me in the Club Twit Discord channel for iOS Today, where I'm always lurking. And uh, we've had some pretty good discussions there recently. Some people asking about air tags on pets, things like that. It's a nice place to hang out. Where can people find you, Micah? You can find me at Micah Sargent on many a social media network or head to chihuahua.coffee, that's C-H-I-H-U-A-H-U-A.coffee, where I've got links to the places I'm most active online. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you uh, for for checking out the show each and every week, for joining us here for iOS Today. I hope you found some new fun games to play or you thought of some things you want to ask us. We're always happy to answer those. Until next week. We will see you then. Yes, that works. Goodbye. (laughs) Did you spend a lot of money on your brand new smartphone and then you look at the pictures on Facebook and Instagram and you're like, what in the world happened to that photo? Yes, you have. I know it happens to all of us. Well, you need to check out my show, Hands On Photography, where I'm going to walk you through simple tips and tricks that are going to help make you get the most out of your smartphone camera or your DSLR or mirrorless, whatever you have. And those shots are going to look so much better. I promise you. So make sure you're tuning in to twit.tv slash hop for hands-on photography to find out more.